Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number 11, part B. It's question 11, part B of the October, November 2022 Pure Mathematics Paper 3. Um, this is a variant 3 as well from this paper from Cambridge 9709. I've already answered part A where we had to take this fraction and split it up into partial fractions. And this is what we got. And this was what f of x is equal to f of x was this so we split it up into these fractions and now it says find the exact value of the integral of f of x with respect to x with the limits 0 to 1 simplifying your answer so of course to integrate this we need to split it up into partial fractions which we have done and so we need to integrate that expression that we got so we're going to integrate between the limits of 0 and 1 2 over 3 minus x plus 1 over 1 plus 3x squared with respect to x. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to deal with them um, separately first just to make it clear because this one is a, involves a bit of uh, you know, a bit of involvement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part, I'm going to integrate this um, as a 2 over 3 minus x between 1 and 0 with respect to x. Now this first part is pretty straightforward because if I differentiate the denominator I get a constant and the numerator is also a constant so this you could say is the result of the chain rule being used to differentiate something in the form of lin whenever you have something where the numerator is the, of the form of the differential of the denominator then that means it will integrate to something involving lin of the denominator something like that Right, so I'm going to put the lin of the modulus. Whenever you integrate with uh, lin, you have to put the modulus of three minus x. Okay, then I have to divide by the differential of what's inside the function. Now, inside the function, you've got three minus x. If I differentiate, I get minus one, so I have to divide by minus one. And then I have my limits between one and zero. So I'll take out that minus one and I'll have the lin of the modulus of 3 minus 1 which is 2 which I don't have to put the modulus of now because 2 is positive so it's going to be lin of 2 okay minus and I'll put 0 in here and that will be the lin of 3 minus 0 which is 3 okay so I have I'll end up with minus the lin of 2 over 3 which is the same as saying the lin of 3 over 2 okay so that is um, the first part done, okay? So I got lin of 3 over 2. Now I want to do the same thing. Um, I want to integrate this now. So I've got to integrate between the limits of 0 and 1. 1 over 1 plus 3x squared with respect to x. Now here I cannot use the same method because if I differentiate the denominator, I'm going to get 6x. Now the numerator is not a term in terms of x. It's just constant 1. So I can't use the reverse of the chain rule. What I have to use here is one of the patterns that we know from integration. And it's in the formula sheet. And I've got it here ready. And it's this one over here. Okay, we're going to use this, this, you know, a standard integral. And this is something that's been introduced since 2020, actually. It wasn't there before in the syllabus. So basically, when you see something of this form, something that looks of this form, Okay, um, then we can use the, the fact that this integrates to become 1 over a times the inverse of tan of x over a, right? So I want to take this first and rewrite it in this form. So I'll take 1 over 1 plus 3x squared. I'll write it first as 1 over 3x squared plus 1. I want to write it so that it looks like this. So I need to have this as, I need to have, to have, I need to have a coefficient of 1 here. So what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out um, 3 from the denominator. So what I'll do is I'll write it as 1 over and I'll put 3 times and then I'll put um, x squared plus 1 over 3. Okay. And I can take out this like a third times 1 over x squared plus 1 over 3. So at the moment it's kind of looking, you know, more like this right more like this now what i'm going to do is 
I'm going to rewrite this so that it's in terms of something squared. So I'm going to write this as one third on the outside. I'll have one over and I'll write this as x squared plus and I'll put this as the square root of one third squared. So now it's of this form. It's of this form. You have one over x squared plus something squared. Okay, so now I can integrate this. So what I'm going to do is I'll rewrite this first as one zero. I'll take out one third, as we've done there, and I'll put one over x squared plus the square root of one third all squared dx. So I've written it in the required form so I can now apply the standard integral. This is, um, you know, this is f of x and this is the integral of f of x. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just rewrite it in this form. So I have, if I have 1 over x squared plus a squared, it becomes 1 over a. So I have 1 over x squared plus something squared, it becomes 1 over this. So I'm going to have 1 over, so this is going to be equal to, and I'll put my square bracket. So I have 1 third on the outside. I have 1 over, I have basically the square root of 1 over 3. It's 1 over a times inverse tan of x over a. So I have x over the square root of 1 over 3. All right? And I have my limits of 1 and 0. Okay? So that's going to give us our answer. All right? We could leave it like this. We could simplify this a bit if we wanted to. Like, for example, I know this is the same as 1 over 1 over root 3 because the square root of 1 is 1, root 3, that gives you root 3. So I can just make it a bit simpler, put a third times, and I have root 3 times the inverse tan of, and this will be the same kind of thing, you'll have uh, root 3 times x. Okay, that makes it a bit simpler, because remember the, the square root of 1 over 3, like this, is like 1 over root 3, and if you have, if you divide it by, if that's divided, you're going to have to flip it, so it'll end up with root 3 times x. Okay, and the x is not part of the root 3. So now we can find our value of the integral. So that's 1 third times root 3 times inverse tan of, you're going to put 1 instead of x, you're going to have inverse tan of root 3, minus, and you'll have root 3 times the inverse tan of, you put 0 here, that'll be 0. So this becomes 0 anyway, inverse tan of 0, 0, inverse tan of root 3, we remember from our triangle, this is root 3, this is 2, this is 1. This is going to be pi over 3, 60 degrees. Yep. Inverse tan of pi over 3 is root 3 over 1. So this is going to give you pi over 3. So you have 1 third times root 3 times pi over 3. And that will be 0. Okay, so you have um, pi times root 3 over 9. So therefore, we can say the total integral, because remember we had this first, is lin 3 over 2. So you have, therefore, you can say the integral of fx with respect to x between 1 and 0 is equal to the lin of 2 over 3. No, sorry, the lin of 3 over 2. Let's put pi times root 3 over 9 plus the lin of 3 over 2. Okay, so there's the answer. You could also put pi of root 3 over 9 minus lin of 2 over 3. That's fine. You can have pi times root 3 over 9 plus lin 3 minus lin 2 if you want to. No problem. If you want to leave those whole numbers. But anything that's equivalent to that would be the correct answer. Okay, so there's the answer to this uh, question. Don't forget, after you've done all of this, to put the whole answer together. I, do, I put it separately because I don't want to get like mixed up with the different parts of it. I've done this separately and that separately and then put them together at the end. Now, this is, this is a very important um, question. You won't find questions like this prior to 2020. I haven't seen these in the LXL syllabus either. I think something this is particular to the Cambridge syllabus. So you have to look out for this pattern if you see it. A lot of people try to do things like you know, 1 plus 3x squared to the power minus 1, and then they get mixed up because they try and add 1 to the power and divide by the power. It doesn't work. Some people try to use lin. Again, you can't use lin for this because 
has to be the numerator is a differential of what's in the denominator. So this is when you see something like that, it doesn't work out in those other ways, then you have to think about this pattern here, this standard integral for inverse tan. Okay, so there's the answer to part B of question number 11 from October, November 2022, Pure Mathematics P3. Other questions from this paper can be found in the um, playlist, which will be in the region over here, including part A of this question, where we split this up. Um, other questions from the topic of integration um, from our um, Cambridge service, P3, you can find in the playlist over here. Okay. And you can find examples of integration from P4 um, in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.